And hours after India launched its first solar mission into the space, we have a big update from ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission. The lunar mission made a historic landing on Moon's south pole on August 23rd. Well, the Vikram lander also carried a rover called Pragyan, which rolled out on the lunar surface hours after touchdown. After studying the lunar surface for almost two weeks, ISRO now says that the rover has completed all of its assignments. Pragyan is now safely parked on the moon and set into sleep mode. Some of its payloads have also been turned off. And as the sun sets on that side of the moon for half a month or so, ISRO says the rover's battery is fully charged at the moment and the solar panels on it are oriented to receive the light at the very next sunrise expected on September 22nd, 2023. Well, the receiver has also been kept on. ISRO is now hoping for the rover's successful awakening for another set of assignments. In case that does not happen, ISRO says that the Pragyan rover will forever stay there as India's lunar ambassador. With the successful landing of Chandrayaan-3 lander, India became the first nation to do so on the lunar south pole. Also, the mission made India only the fourth nation ever to land on the moon. Russia, US and China have earlier achieved a soft landing on the lunar surface. And now India joins the elite club. And for more on this, on, on lunar missions, latest findings, we are now being joined by senior correspondent Siddharth MP, live from Chennai. A very good morning to you, Siddharth. Could you tell us a bit more about the significance of finding sulfur on the moon? Yeah, so sulfur find and among the other finds that uh, Chandrayaan's uh, lander and rover have made on the moon are all preliminary findings. We have to remember that these are all theory at this point in time. So these findings will have to be validated in the coming weeks and months. So for every single equipment on board, there is a principal investigator. And of course, there are academy and institutions that are studying this data. So it's only progressively that we'll understand the exact status. But theoretically, there are some possibilities that emerge with the sulfur find. There are some NASA documents we are quoting from. So NASA's documents from the 1990s say that there is a possibility that molten sulfur, that is sulfur uh, from the moon at very, very high temperatures, once heated, that can be mixed with lunar soil to derive a concrete-like material which can perhaps be used for construction. This of course is only a theoretical possibility, but this is something that has to be studied. So there are so many possibilities that the find of a metal or a rare earth element on the lunar surface opens up. So this is one of them, but all of these are just preliminary findings. We'll have to wait for for at least a few months to you know get the actual findings of the data and to understand the scientific implications Raisha. right that we, we we just heard that the Vikram lander has been put on a sleep mode after completing first set of its assignments well how many days are left on the rover and the lander's lifespan and uh, talk to us and also shed some light as to why are they so brief Yeah, so I'll tell you that uh, this mission has an operational life of two weeks. As you pointed out, it's a fortnightly mission. And why fortnightly mission? Because one lunar day is 14 days on Earth. Mm -hmm. For that exact reason, this mission has been sent at the start of the lunar day. And then naturally at the end of the lunar day, the mission comes to an end. And then as uh, far as Vikram Lander and Pragyan Rover are concerned, Vikram Lander is the mother craft and the Pragyan Rover is a smaller, uh, you know, craft and a vehicle. And Pragyan is dependent 100% on Vikram. Uh, so both of them have their own solar panels both of them are able to harness the power of the sun and then charge their batteries all these days they did all their activities based on solar power and they're able to sustain their activities but what happens as isro realizes that the lunar day is coming to an end so naturally when the sunlight is fading away from that region the possibility of charging the batteries and charging the you know um, systems on board using solar power comes uh, down so then what is done is the, both of them are gradually put into a hibernation mode so vikram lander being the primary or the mother craft 
Vikram lander is now still functional, but the Pragyan rover, which is a dependent craft, has now been put into sleep mode. So this we can just understand as to a hibernation mode that animals go into during winter. Grizzly bears and other animals go into a hibernation mode. They eat a lot of food, they store their energy, and then they go into a sort of sleepy state for a couple of weeks. There's no activity. It's exactly the same thing that uh, the Pragyan rover is doing because as far as Pragyan is concerned, uh, all this while Pragyan and Vikram survived temperatures anywhere between 50 degrees to 100 degrees centigrade, which is for earthlings, this is at least the hottest or perhaps twice the hottest temperature that you can see on earth. And then as far as lunar night is concerned, they'll be experiencing anything from minus 130 to minus 200 degrees centigrade, which is, you know, twice or thrice as much as the coldest temperatures ever recorded on earth. So they'll be facing such extreme temperatures during the lunar night, which is precisely why to ensure their electronics and batteries survive this night, they're being put into a sleep or a hibernation mode where they charge their batteries in full but switch off their systems but of course both of them let's remember are oriented towards the sun with their solar panels so that at next light when the next lunar dawn breaks they're able to charge themselves back up and if that possibility exists they will come back to life again but that's something we'll have to wait for at least um, you know the third week of september to understand whether both of them come back to life after this lunar night raisha Absolutely, Siddharth. Now, from the moon to the sun, India has joined the elite space club. Now, is there any overlap between Chandra and 3 and Aditya L1's mission? So as far as overlaps are concerned, there are multiple similarities between these missions. As far as Chandrayaan-3 is concerned, it was the third mission to study uh, the moon. And as far as Chandrayaan-3 is concerned, it's also a repeat of Chandrayaan-2, which wanted to do a lunar soft landing and do in-situ studies using both lander and rover. Whereas Aditya is an all-new mission. Of course, Aditya was also uh, conceptualized a couple of decades ago. But what we have to remember as far as Aditya is concerned is that it is the first ever Indian mission to study the sun. And, you know, one more similarity is that both of them are using the orbit raising maneuver technique which means the rocket directly does not put them into a path the spacecraft is not put on a direct path to reach its final destination instead what is being done is because the rockets are not strong enough the rockets are not muscular enough to hurl the spacecraft you know into its direct destination path what happens is that the craft is gradually pushed in a circular fashion in orbit around the earth and with every you know firing of the engines what is done is an orbit raising maneuver which is uh, now commonly known as a slingshot approach so because you can't go directly with your own en rockets engines you slingshot it gradually and then you push it further further towards the destination so chandrayaan 3 took just about uh, 35 days to reach in orbit around the moon whereas aditya will take uh, much more than that aditya will take around 125 days so as far as Aditya is concerned, we can say that uh, 125 days is the time taken to cover a distance of 15 lakh kilometers, which is almost, um, you know, three and a half times what Chandrayaan-3 covered. Hence, it's taking as much time. So Chandrayaan had to travel around 3.84 lakh or 4 lakh kilometers. So, you know, there's three and a half times more distance to be covered. Hence, there's as much time being taken for the Aditya mission. Of course, Aditya is also not going anywhere close to the sun. It's barely going 1% of the distance to the sun. The Earth Earth sun distance is 150 million kilometers, but Aditya is only going to 1.5 million kilometers, a point known as Lagrangian point one, which is named after the European mathematician and astrophysicist Lagrange. So it's going to that point, which will offer a complete vantage view of the sun. And from there, there are no eclipses. There are no occultations. You can watch the sun entirely. There is no daylight, day or night difference. Every minute the payloads on board Aditya will be able to image the sun and its outermost layers. And that's what Aditya is all about, Raisha. Absolutely, uh, Siddharth. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond and sharing your insights with us on this story. We'll, of course, be tracking this very closely right here on Beyond. Thanks very much.